Hey guys, Zix here. Time for the next tutorial for Semtech Gauge 3.12, focusing on immersive engineering. This is part two of our series. Today we're going to focus on power generation, the stuff that we need to get ourselves the electricity that we need. You can see behind me the water wheel. That is most people's first option for power. It is very easy to make, it is very easy to set up, and it is very easy to get power going. But but it doesn't move very fast, it doesn't produce power very fast, so we want to go to see what the max efficiency one is. Well, if we continue sliding to the right here, the left, the left here, you can see I've added a little water source, I've moved the water source block up a little higher. You can see the water wheel is moving faster, therefore generating more power, but wait, there's more. Right here, we have our max efficiency. Now, some of the tutorials online are showing Water source block here, water source block there, water source block here, do this, this, then you push it. No, 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 no. Just one, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see me. Just one water source block right up there. I hit F5 too many times. There we go. Right up here, uh, you can see I put a block there because we don't want the water coming down. This goes all the way down. We have another block right here. So that this little kick out right here pushes it a little bit faster. That right there is as fast as we're going to get uh, with the water wheel. Uh, so as we proceed through this tutorial, I am going to be doing cut breaks as I move. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start that right now. Be right back. Okay, next we have ourselves the windmill. It's a little bit more labor intensive to make than the water mill. However, it's not too bad. It's just these treated wood planks. They can be a little scarce if you haven't been saving up your creosote oil, like I hope you are. And one little iron ingot here and then in the windmill uh, is going to be made with eight of those blades. Relatively simple. Since we are on a custom flat earth, we are at Y like two. Uh, and so this is about <laughs> at least efficient possible that you could put a windmill because I don't know if you can tell it's moving a little bit faster. The higher up you go, the faster the windmill moves, the more power it's going to generate. And of course, it starts raining like so, and in the rain. It moves even faster. Now you can see, look how fast that guy's going. Uh, so we're not actually going to clear the rain because we're going to go and we're going to have a little look see at this. Uh, so that's actually producing power quite quickly. Now if the weather, the rain, it's actually really good timing that the rain started. Um, now when the rain stops, it's not going to be producing quite so quickly. Ooh. Also, let's go down here for a comparison. Uh, it's still going pretty fast because of the rain. Uh, the, because of the wind, rain and causing the extra wind, but believe me, the higher up, the faster they go. You can almost kind of see it uh, while as I, was, I was flying up. It's harder to tell in the rain because they're all moving pretty quickly now. Uh, but that's the windmill. The windmill, especially when you get quite a few of these going, it can be a little costly, the amount of creosote oil you will need for the amount of treated wood that you will need, um, as opposed to the water wheels. Uh, however, it's not impossible to do, uh, and it's not a bad idea to have a mixture of water wheels and windmills uh, in the early stages. Uh, but next, we're going to look into the next source of power, uh, and then we will do so right, right now, right back. I almost forgot an important part. Uh, you can actually increase the efficiency of your windmill by adding windmill sails, which again is a little cost effect it's a little not super cost effective however right click like a so oh it used that up didn't it okay that's okay we'll get we'll just get a bunch of these look how much faster that bad boy is uh, this is going to greatly increase the power production but now look at that guy go so one of the a couple of these guys and some water wheels is going to be enough to get your early stuff powered up. Uh, so now, for real this time, be right back. The next power generation we have, the next reasonable step, is the thermolytic, thermoelectric generator. This guy works by putting a hot source opposite of a cold source. And it's actually fairly easy to do. Uh, so we go like so, we get our capacitor, we get our connectors, and we hook them up. 
Couldn't be simpler. Now this doesn't produce super fast uh, when you do just two, but we're gonna go ahead. We're going to double the output. Like I said, now this is gonna catch up to this guy pretty quickly. Let's see, because it's gonna be producing at double. You can already see it's it's gonna it's gonna surpass it very soon. Maybe once we get to 10,000 here... Almost, yeah, we're just about... Yeah, he's, he's overtaking him now. Uh, and this guy right here, not very difficult to make either. Now, Constantine is going to require an alloy of nickel and copper. I think it's nickel and copper. Hold on a second. Yeah, nickel and copper. Um, the, the most expensive part of this is going to be this... Whoa, is this copper coil uh, block. Uh, this is kind of... This is pretty heavy on the copper. Uh, but it's not impossible to make, and two of these guys can travel with a pump jack and make the pump jack work. It'll be slow, but it, it can travel with the pump jack if you don't feel like cooking up power lines. I prefer to have a power generation area, personally myself, and I prefer to transfer the power over long distances to my machines. I don't like this. Um, this this move around setup uh, but uh, yeah uh, and then now next we're going to get into oil processing we'll be right back okay next we're going to get into oil processing to do so we need this core sample drill uh, not too expensive but it is a little heavy on the steel uh, and of course these iron mechanical components you're better off making in the engineers workbench with a blueprint uh, because it is cheaper than creating them just in a regular old crafting window. But of course, if you want to, you can waste your iron. That's fine with me, I don't care. So now we have ourselves our capacitor, something I did not mention. In the previous episode, when you right click with your, your hammer, uh, it's going to change the input output or turn it off completely. Blue is input, orange is output. Make sure you're set to orange if you're doing it this way. We're going to hook up our wire. Power's gonna go in there real quick. We're gonna right click with an empty hand and you're gonna see this core core driller going down. It's pretty cool. I actually don't know if this will work on a flat world, but I'm sure it will. We'll come all the way up, right click again, and we will get a core sample. You can see uh, it is stone, it is stone. Now, if you want, we have the core stand, which I had forgot to put in my inventory. That's not a big deal. We're just gonna throw it on the ground. There you go. There's a core stand that you can put out, which is not a terrible idea, uh, but once you figure out which which one you're gonna be in, hold on a second, I better change. There we go. Before we sit here and uh, run out of stuff, run out of the power, we want, there's, well, there's three things that you can get um, that are important. You want power, I think you, you want water, you want oil, and you want lava. Lava is not the most important thing in the world. Uh, however, it's nice to have an infinite source of lava. What do we get? Cinnabar vein. No fluid. Not helpful. Not helpful at all. That's okay. Oop, no, no, use the hammer. We're gonna try here. I want to get one of the three important ones before we proceed. Also, when you're looking at the core sample, it shows the F9. You don't have to hit F9. It shows the chunk pointer for you. What do we have? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, if I don't get one pretty soon here, I'm just going to skip ahead. Power up! Come on, baby. Give us what we need. Give me the fuel. I want lava. Or I want water. Or oil. Give it to me. Stone. Again. Fantastic. You couldn't help me out for the purposes of a video, could you, game? Just couldn't do it. Just. Whoops. Too close. Back her up. No, not back her up. Back her up. I give those to my wife all the time. Come on, give me what we're looking for. Show me what you're working with. Oh, one more. 
one more and then I will go ahead and do and find uh, what we're looking for off camera. I thought that hemp over there was a creeper. But I'm in peaceful. Hello? Okay, that one completely glitched out. I think I clicked it before it was powered up, maybe? And now we're... Oh, we're out of power. Aha! Aha! Well, don't worry. I came prepared. I got a million right here. This will take care of our problems, trust me. Is this the one? Yeah. That's why it didn't work. Make sure you got power. I don't... Whoops. No, no. You could do it on any 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 side. You don't have to do it. That might be too close. Nope, we're good. There it is. What do we got? Lava! Yay! All right. So what you're going to do, we're going to get our pump jack. Like I said, I prefer to get a power generation area. And then I like to channel all that power through power lines, like you can see here. And then I bring those, whoa, whoa, watch out, blades. I bring those power, that actually doesn't hurt you. I was just doing that for effect. Woo, see, doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt. Ow, ooh, ah, ee, ah. Uh, I like to bring power lines over to the machines, similar to like, obviously I wouldn't wrap it around like that, like a fool, I'd come straight at it. Um, but uh, yeah, like, like a so, um, there's no power being generated on this line, so there's not gonna be any power in this pump jack. Uh, I wonder what's in this. Where is the pump jack actually? He's actually in this chunk right here. I'm curious to know. I don't have my power. I'm actually curious to know what's in this. I think these are LVs. It's fine. Oh, that's okay. I got one. I got one coil. What we got here. Maybe I can pump something here and not need to. Maybe I can pump something here and not need to. I actually don't know. I mean, the pump part is in this chunk. Out you go. There's actually lava here. There's totally lava here, so <laughs> we don't have to move this pump jack for lava anyway. We don't need lava uh, for the purposes of this video. Uh, the only thing you need lava and immersive engineering for is these guys, and you can use a, a, just a static source. You don't need, uh, you don't need uh, re repeating lava. I like to have lava simply for a tinker smeltery, so that I always have a tinker smeltery ready to go. Um, then, and, and we're all set. Okay, so I'm gonna get go ahead and get ready. Uh, I'm gonna find uh, an oil. There's gotta be oil somewhere. Uh, and then we're going to proceed uh, to the last step, which is going to be distilling oil into diesel and then the diesel generator, which is the best power source that we're going to have. Be right back. Okay, here we go. We have found ourselves an oil resource. By the way, shift right click is how you place it. Whoops. Yeah, this is how you place the word creative. It's how you place these, and then you can shift, as you saw, you can shift right click it again uh, if you placed it in the wrong chunk uh, to go ahead and uh, mark where you've been. Because you're not going to make 18 core, drill core drillers, you're going to make one, and you're going to move that guy around. So you put these samples down in each chunk so that you know you can be certain, there it is, so you can be certain that uh, you're not... Uh, doubling up in the same chunk. Okay, so I went ahead and built the pump jack. I've already built it before. Watch the last tutorial if you don't know how to. We've hooked up the power. Let me show you what we've done. Let me show you how that. I went ahead and I made six of these guys. Very easy when you have creative. And I hooked them up to these little power plant uh, power holders here. I know that you don't need to do this. I just like to. Uh, I like to store excess energy. Uh, and then we have LV wire connectors from orange output into LV wire relays all the way over here to the pump jack. We could speed this up a little bit with MV, but I do not recommend using HV because it could end up sending more power than it can handle and it can blow up. 
He said more than 1,024 protect this would blow up. It's a bad day. Anyway, we are pumping oil. You can tell because there's oil. I wonder why we waste so much. Anyway, it ejects on both sides. Uh, so you can pump it in two different directions. I like to pump underground. We're just going to use steel just to show where the pipe is. And I like to pump into the bottom of the tank. You can pump into the very bottom there. Um, this just it makes the world a little bit cleaner as you're walking around. Uh, of course, you wouldn't use steel. <laughs> you would you'd probably rebuild it with dirt that grows back into grass or just grass. Uh, pumps into here. You can see there's a little gauge right here showing you how much is in there. Uh, and then when we're ready to proceed, we're going to pump this out. But you guys are going to have to stay tuned to the next episode in order to see what to do with this oil. That is enough for this tutorial. Quick recap. Maximum efficiency water mill. Maximum efficiency wind windmill in the rain. Good timing well, yet again. Up as high as you can put it. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain, painful process getting the power down, but if you put your LV wire your relays on the side of a block, it can be easy. Like, you have your, your guy up here, and it comes to like this, and then it comes to like this, and then like that, and like that. That's how you can bring it down, uh, or you can just bring it straight down. You don't have to zigzag it. Uh, but remember, you can't move more than 15 blocks at a time uh, if you are going to do that step. Then we went into the core sample drill, which you may have to move around. My advice to you is to power up a capacitor and bring it with you instead of trying to hook it up to your main power lines over and over and over again. That can be a little annoying. Uh, you could bring a thermoelectric setup along with you, but that all as well is a little annoying. Then we found and we placed the core sample for the correct core in the correct chunk. And we got ourselves oil pumping into an oil tank. And in the next episode, we're going to process this oil. This is a little bit of a lengthy process, so we're saving it for its own episode. Thank you guys so very much for watching. And as always, take it easy.